Feeling disconsolate, uh, he returned to his study and began flipping through his CD rack. His eyes scanned for Aya Kimikuri's album For Tomorrow, Forevermore. A lot of her more experimental numbers were on the album. Given how discombobulated he felt right now, this was what he needed to hear. Again, I saw I reflected on how there'd been had there been time when he didn't care about music at all. He simply purchased copies of the most popular CD or of the of the moment as birthday presents for his two girls. But that had just happened to be an album of Aya Kamiki. Terry was thrilled by the gift, but Maria didn't seem terribly fond of it. Next day, she tossed her copy back on her father's desk. Figuring that throwing away would be a waste, Asawa had stuck the CD into the computer to give it a listen. He was immediately bothered by an intense beat bolstered by bold, uplifting vocals. And I can wrote her own lyrics, which did a fine job of conveying the emotions of a teenage girl. So I could hardly believe it. But isn't it just one track? He was well and truly hooked. And stabbed. Uh, let's see. Yes, okay. Oh, day was out, he had, he had purchased her entire discography. Bloody hell, he felt, he felt hooked. Huh? He muttered. For tomorrow, it should have been in the CD rack, but there was no sign of it. Where the heck is it? Why isn't it here? I don't know if everyone was going crazy, and then he remembered it was at the lab. He wanted something to listen to on break at work, so he'd bought the album there. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Not being able to listen to it made him want to hear it all more. It wasn't like he could just go out and buy another copy right now, either. He'd just have to borrow the copy he'd given to Tommy all those years ago.